Hello again in this video clip series I'm calling My Journey to God in a Very Secularized World. I would like to continue in this topic of this phrase that also I wrote an article on this, Birds of a Feather Flock Together, to, you know, to, to help us open our eyes to, to the ones who are leading us astray, not leading us toward God, but away from God. And, and worse. I, I had mentioned in other articles, uh, other video clips, I'd like to repeat what Our Lady of Good Success, Quito, Ecuador, on January 20th, 1610, told us. From, from, she said many things, but just a few things that she said. She said, Thus I make it known to you that from the end of the 19th century and shortly after the middle of the 20th century, the passions will erupt and there will be a total corruption of morals. As for the sacrament of matrimony, which symbolizes the union of Christ with his church, it will be attacked and deeply profaned. Freemasonry, which will then be in power, will enact iniquitous laws with the aim of doing away with this sacrament, making it easy for everyone to live in sin and encouraging procreation of illegi illegi illegitimate children born without the blessing of the church. And then she says, in this supreme moment of need of the church, the one who should speak will fall silent. By now there are many Freemasons in the Vatican. It is very interesting that Our Lady of Good Success said the one who should speak. She did not say the ones who should speak, or those who should speak. That is not a group of bishops, but one person. She's talking about the Pope. Today, people are well prepared for this underhanded and very devastating deception of silence. After many years of silence about sin and about the consequences of sin on the part of almost all the fathers of the families, of the priests and the bishops. You might visit an article I wrote, the false pope will fall silent. You know, uh, I had talked about before also, in, in, which kind of goes together with this, that in this article I wrote, Rigid with Christ, the immutable truth, the great damage due to the camouflage hypocrisy of Pope Francis. Because, as I wrote in that article, in a prepared speech to the bishops of Mozambique on September 7, 2019, Francis warned them against young, rigid priests. He said, he said, I would like to emphasize an attitude that I do not like because it does not come from God, he says. Rigidity, rigidity, he said. Today it is fashionable to find rigid people. He added, young, rigid priests who want to save with rigidity, I don't know. But they take this attitude of rigidity and sometimes, excuse me, from the museum. He's criticizing, part of this, he's criticizing the priest and anybody else who remains faithful to the truth of God that does not change with the world of being rigid, rigid, and not, no love. It's incredible how they, they reverse everything. I mean, Jesus was, would be totally accused and condemned by Pope Francis. Because he was, Jesus never compromised with the truth from his father. Never. Jesus would be a bad person, according to Pope Francis. In this speech, it is very clear that Pope Francis is referring to young, rigid priests who are not willing to change or compromise the truth that comes from God. The truth that God has given to mankind through the centuries, which we call divine revelation and which is infallibly explained by the church that Jesus Christ founded, the Catholic Church. The truth of God does not change with the world, and thus the documents of the Catholic Church for over 2,000 years, which explain the truth of God that cannot change, even though the majority of the people today want to change the truth of God according to their pleasure and rationalistic interpretation of divine revelation. The... Because the truth comes from God, not from the church. 
The church is the servant of the truth, not the author of the truth. The church must protect and defend the precious gift of the truth, not change the truth in a hidden, sly way to please the world. The truth from God, not from the world, will make us free. The truth from the world will make us slaves. You know, as I mentioned before, but it's worth repeating, help people open their eyes, that St. Thomas Aquinas, quoting St. Augustine, in his commentary on the right of subjects to resist flaky superiors, recalled that in St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, St. Paul rebuked the first Pope, St. Peter, to his face because he clearly was wrong. There being an imminent danger for the faith, prelates must be questioned, even publicly, by their subjects. Thus St. Paul, who is a subject of St. Peter, questioned him publicly on account of an imminent danger or, uh, of scandal in the matter of faith. And, and St. Augustine, he puts it this way, which St. Thomas quoted, St. Peter himself gave the example to those who govern, so that if sometimes they stray from the right way, they will not reject a correction as unworthy, even if it comes from their subjects. You, you know, I, I, and put it in another way, you know, if you come to me and you say, Father Joe, I think what you said or wrote is not, not, not the right teaching of the church. If I believe then that the, tr that the truth comes from God, not from me, and I have a little humility, I'll say, okay, let's talk. But instead, if I think it, the truth comes from me, or I have a hidden agenda in any other thing, then I'm not willing to talk to anybody who's not agreeing with me, as they've done all the dictators in the history of the world. This is exactly what Pope Francis does. <laughs> you, you know, the, because, I repeat, the truth comes from God, not from the church. And thus no priest, bishop, or pope can change the truth of divine revelation, which is well summarized in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, that gift that John Paul II left us. <clears throat> Simply put, this is precisely what several cardinals wrote in the Dubia, November 2016, and in the book Remaining in the Truth of Christ, Marriage and Communion in the Catholic Church, October 2014. And many other cardinals and bishops and orthodox Catholic professors in the last nine years. I want to repeat that that book that they published in October 2014, they gave a copy of everyone at the Synod before Amoris Laetitia, and during the night it was taken out of the mailboxes and, and disappeared. These cardinals and bishops and professors who were not the ones that wrote these things, they, they were not offering their opinions as among many other human opinions, but rather they were doing what all the saints did and what St. Paul did 2,000 years ago. Why is there no longer dialogue in the, last, in, in, the, in the last 13, 14 years with any cardinal or bishop or priest or professor who proclaims that we must remain faithful to the saving, authentic truth of Christ, which does not change with the world? Instead, these courageous men are silenced in various clever, hidden ways. Jesus said, the truth of God, the rock, not of the world, sand, will set you free. Jesus did not say, a pope or a bishop will set you free. Did God give us the Ten Commandments for our own good or for our harm? Do we, do we trust God or do we trust ourselves? Do we want to spend eternity with God in peace or with all those who want to command and make war with each other for all eternity? The choice is ours. You know, the, what will we say to Jesus, who is the truth, when we die? That we follow the unchanging truth of Jesus, well explained by his church, or that we follow the easier worldly false truth of the majority of people or the many important people in the church who do not remain faithful to the truth of divine revelation. For 2,000 years, Christians have understood from the words of Christ, well explained by the Catholic Church, that it is a grave mortal sin to have sex outside of marriage. Now, after Amoris Laetitia, there are m many divisions in the church and a great number of Catholics believe that cohabitation 
outside of Christian marriage is okay since God loves me and God is merciful. They, they don't want to hear those words of Christ, go and sin no more. With this new concept of false mercy detached from divine truth and from conversion to the will of God, many believe that they no longer have to heed the first words of Christ, repent and believe in the gospel, or even the Ten Commandments, and they can delete from the traditional act of contrition, I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin. Jesus said, you will know them by their fruits. Jesus did not say, you will know them by their leaves, which would be their nice words disguised as an angel of light. How many people have no, they don't want to make any distinctions so they can just live any way they would like to live? I end this video clip here. May God bless you and Mary guide you.